A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Atiyya Allah, Atiyya Rasul, Hulul Amri, Minkum. And always a reminder for myself, An abduka la hajisa da'ifa wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahad. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. InshaAllah welcoming of the holy month of Muharram and the 10 days of Ashura in which Allah grants a salvation that every nation was saved on the 10th of Muharram. That from the levels of the heart if we go Sayyidina Adam salam was granted after 40 years of repentance on the 10th of Muharram was granted a salvation, was granted a forgiveness. And Sayyidina Nu because each one represents the completion of faith and the reality of the perfection of the soul and that Sayyidina Nu <coughs> was told to build a ship. I mean Sayyidina Adam is, is coming from heavens with knowledges, makes a mistake and is sent onto this earth for a spiritual experience, a physical experience, how to survive outside of that paradise reality and as a result of struggling for 40 years and making forgiveness, asking for forgiveness and maghfirah on Ashura and the time of salvation Allah accepted his repentance and with certain words, Allahu Ya Hamid Abu Haqqa Muhammad Ya Allahu Ya Allah Abu Haqqa Imam Ali, Ya Allahu Al Khaliq Abu Haqqa Fatima Tizara, Ya Rahman Abu Haqqa Imam Al Hasan, Ya Rahim Abu Haqqa Imam Al Hussein and began to make du'as and that was from Sayyidina Adams salam's tour of paradise and what Sayyidina Jibra'il had shown Sayyidina Adam of the realities of the lights of paradise, the reality of, of Prophet the reality of Sayyidatina Fatima Tuzari salam, the reality of the gate for Imam Ali salam, all of these realities that were taught to Sayyidina Adam salam means he knew a certain way of code. As a result then Allah accepted by means of these words that you have asked me, now make your du'a and that your repentance. As Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. be accepted. So it has an immense understanding in the path of knowledges that it's not just what we recite only or that you, you recite certain things but the knowledge of what's being recited on how it may open something from Allah from its haqqaiq and its realities. The straight ayats of Qur'ans and, and tawbahs that he was making for 40 years he was making those du'as until he asked, Ya Hamid Abu Haq Muhammad that it was inspired within his heart and isharat that, remember what you were seeing, remember the Muhammadan haqqaiq and haqiqatan Muhammadiyya and by means of that reality ask Allah by that means to forgive you. So alhamdulillah by that reality Allah accepted and then Ashura these lights were granted, the repentance was granted. Sayyidina Nu salam building a ship of safety and has to do with the realities of the soul and being tested and continuously being tested and that ship and that najat was granted on Ashura to find land and safety. 
and the Sayyidina Nuh represents our soul. Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Musa were saved on Ashura, Sayyidina Isa salam was saved from the hands of, <coughs> of those who would betray him on Ashura. Sayyidina Muhammad began the hijrah, the movement from the reality of Mecca into the opening of the cities of light, the reality of the city of light, the reality of the soul with Medina to Munawwara that Prophet was granted that permission to begin that opening. <coughs> As a result that is the reality of the hijrah which we call the pilgrimage. That pilgrimage starts on the first of Muharram. As a result our calendar and the Islamic lunar calendar is based on the movement of Prophet means that is the, the imitation of why we say that these 12 months we are in a continuous hijrah. We are in a continuous state of pilgrimage to the Divinely Presence. The Prophet set out on Muharram to begin to open these realities and arrive within Medina to Munawwara on Ashura. And the city of lights which represents the reality of the souls and the heavenly kingdom. The, the Mecca reality is the dunya and the Medina reality is Malakut. And that Allah opened for Prophet this city of lights and the Medina to Munawwara, the beatific lights of the re realities of paradise and Malakut inshaAllah. And that same hijrah is then the example of our path and struggling and then all the way to Ashura and the events of the family of Sayyidina Muhammad and the events of Karbala and Imam and Husayn in which the family of Prophet set out into the deserts of Karbala and Iraq and they were betrayed. And as a result of their being betrayed then those became the killing fields in which the Muslim community attacked Imam and Husayn and they shed the blood of the family. 72 members of families and companions and the presence of Imam and Husayn all in the realities of Ashura and that by means of that difficulty Allah granted in Najat into the entire nation of Sayyidina Muhammad So many, many, many realities, immense realities that have to do with this opening of light and this reality of salvation. One for us to think as we're beginning this year is that this is a life of struggle. Means that when the, the master and the king of our way is a continuous symbol of our lives that I'm going to set off from Mecca and move towards Medina to Munawwara. And as a result of that movement Imam Ali salam asked Prophet, let me stay in the bed where you'll be, where the people whom are coming after you will be looking for you, they'll find me in the bed, let them to sacrifice me, harm me and you re leave towards Medina to Munawwara. Means that where Allah wounds from you, the inhabitants of Mecca we're going to harm Prophet that you continue with the journey and deliver the message of Allah and as a youthful innocence Imam Ali Salam laid within the bed to sacrifice his life for that reality. Just on that point the tariqah comes and begins to teach our life is about struggle. That opening the year and opening our lives with the concept of khidmat and service and struggling. That every time we want to be of service in life means that not serving shaitan but trying our best to serve Rahman, shaitan become very angered and he is not going to let that just run to the finish line and do whatever is necessary. Anytime a servant of Allah wishes to pick a flag 
and say that I want to represent this reality because every service is a flag because you become a, a flag bearer of your reality. If it's a huge service, it's a huge flag. If it's service and there's no small service but whatever people are doing they have to visualize in their lives it's a flag. As soon as you hold that flag and that can be somebody donating because they're all supporting, they're all tugging the rope, it's like a huge rope and thousands of pounds of weight of burdens and we're all trying to push it to a finish line. And everyone holding that rope, shaitan's only interest, that's why Allah just say, hold tight to this rope, don't separate because it's like a tug of war. We're all holding this khidmat to make Prophet happy with us whether it's supporting the charities, supporting the websites, uh, supporting articles and, and posting them, whether reading and doing zikr, whatever, whatever this whole operation is doing, our tariqah lives are doing, we are trying to hold this rope and keep pushing it towards the finish line. Shaitan by no means, by no means whatsoever is allowing anyone to do that because that goes against his entire grain of his own reality. So his only job is to go to everybody's hands and start biting on them. Whatever he can do to get their service to be stopped. And the one whom stops it as if he's given in and put his flag of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah and surrendered that flag. Only at that time when they surrender to that flag they'll find a sense where shaitan is not biting them anymore because they are then the murid of shaitan because he'll begin to take them and twist them and wind them in every type of direction. So if you're not struggling and you're not finding those types of difficulty you must be doing something wrong. If you took a path of ease there's no reward. So there must be a continuous path of struggle. Now struggle is everything. Struggle is that when we donate and, oh we struggled with that. Struggled when we give our time and I could have been doing something else, I could have been texting my friends and enjoying entertainment instead of focusing on the zikr and doing my practices. Everything is a struggle. Giving time in the way of a reality is a struggle. Being of service is a struggle. Everything. you wear something and people say, why you, you look like this? Why are you with them? Why are you doing zikr? Why are you… everything shaitan is going to come against us to make our struggle difficult and to stop it. And that's, that's the importance of the understanding of struggle and Muharram that it sets the beginning is Surat al-Tawbah. And we advise people to recite and read Surat Al Tawbah in your language for the sake of understanding Ayatul Kareem, the importance of the ayahs. The Surat Al Tawbah ayahs are immensely important in Naqshbandiya. That many Ayatul Kareem, when you read them, you say, Oh, this is what the shaykhs are always reciting, this is all about the bayah, this is about this, this is about that. It's the gateway of this city of understanding, Shamsul Arafeen. That if we could imagine a gate for the entry into the heart of Prophet it's Surat Al Tawbah in which there's no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Means then in this way of struggle you cannot time out because Allah didn't put Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, it's Bismillah Allahu Akbar, you came to be slaughtered. So means that at every direction there's a struggle. As soon as you think you have a second of ease there's ten other pro problems opening in different directions. So it means that in every direction, every direction is a continuous struggle. So that one to get this rope to keep moving and that each individual person not to let go of the rope. For if they let go of the rope it's not that you found an ease. It's that something else has grabbed, grabbed hold of that servant and now they're on a completely different course. So we pray that Allah grant us an understanding, grant us the importance of khidmat and service 
grant us not to be distracted. That the dunya has many distractions that take you from your focus, from your tariqah, from your practices. And if you fall prey to those distractions it's like a bullet being fired. You think it's small but by the time it goes it's moving at such a high velocity you find yourself so far from the path that you, you wanted to achieve and the realities you wanted to achieve and that's the deception of shaitan that make everybody just to go in different directions and to do everything the wrong way and incorrect way. This path of struggle is very real that we have to find in our lives a continuous struggle, a continuous way to achieve these realities and these blessings and not to let go of that reality. And if we're doing it right there should be constant agitation, constant aggravation and that's why the importance of teaching tafakkur and all the meditation is that without the meditation and spiritual practices people will run from the difficulties. They'll put the flag and run, that's it, they can't do it. The whole purpose of the tafakkur in last day and why they open it and why they open a permission that whomever is sitting and locking their hearts they're having immense experiences and why that is so that they can continue holding the flag. Because anyone holding a flag who's being tested then of course Allah's opening. But if they walk away from testing the openings close because why they're, they're going to open something for somebody who's not doing any service. The service, the khidmat brings rahmah, the khidmat brings rahmah because we have given talks before that what do you think are the blessings in your life? That you, you, you prayed, you ate some food, what, what is it that you did or we do that we think brings blessings in our lives? We ate, well, alhamdulillah Allah, Allah had a blessing upon us, we're not blessed because we ate a lot. That Allah is not sending showering blessings upon us because we eat a lot, because we sleep a lot. We pray, you had to pray, it's a fad, it's, it's mandatory. No, but we had in our life things that we were supposed to do to be of service. Those services have immense blessings. Those are what make us to be blessed. Those are what people say, oh mashaAllah you have such a, a light upon you. Those are the things that make people to like you, be attracted to you. Your work is like, oh they feel that they need you at the office, whatever it is that people find either juzba and attraction and energy that the souls of people or animals or creatures want to be around you, it's a khidmat, it's a light that Allah sending that, that you live a life of service as a, res as a result of that service there's a tremendous blessing. And that was the secret of tariqahs that they inherited otherwise what made the Sahabi to be honoured, kiram, to be honoured? Is it because they lived in the village and they just passed by Prophet and then they went somewhere else? No, it's not because they, they merely just saw Prophet and lived somewhere and just did their own life. But the, the companions and the holy companions were holy because of their khidmat and service to Sayyidina Muhammad because there are people everywhere but you don't call them companions. Those whom took the companionship they lived the life of khidmat to Prophet and they served the nation and established the Islamic nation upon this earth. Now the forebears and those whom are carrying that flag is to continue the Islamic nation upon this earth. The propagation of its knowledges and its realities and the sunnah and the way of Sayyidina Muhammad That's the responsibility of this generation and if it is the last of the generations because the belief is that Dajjal is, is on this earth and that Imam Mahdi is moving upon this earth and the unveiling of his reality inshaAllah soon 
If that's the case then this is an extremely blessed nation in which Prophet described that, these are my muhibin, these are my ashiqeen, they love me, they do anything for one glimpse of me and I love them. And that's why then the guidance is to teach people to love Prophet <coughs> to achieve that title, <coughs> excuse me, to achieve that title. That's a title and an honour that Prophet has given but who will stand up to achieve it? That's, that's the reality. Who will achieve it are those whom Allah guide to be with awliya and the students of awliya and those whom they hear the guidance and they answer the call and the answer for the call is their service. We said, we said the service is so easy but so difficult by shaitan. No matter how easy awliya make it, it still seems to be difficult for people. Before the holy companions they had to fight to be with Prophet They would have battles at least two a day, imminent death. Wasn't they were going to go out and, and just beat everybody up easily. There was immense battles of nations wanting to crush and to destroy the message of Prophet No life insurance. They did what they did for their extreme love for Prophet So they lay the foundation that our life is about in an immense struggle. As a result of their struggling Allah opened for them immense realities. Then every other nation this became much more difficult, much more difficult, much more difficult. And even to the extent that they're asking the khidmat and the service is to support, take a link and spread the knowledges. Get a sandwich and give out to people so that to bring a barakah to you, your family and your children. Whatever it is that the person can do to their ability, if they can make a hundred sandwiches and they have the rizq, alhamdulillah. If they can do anything, they made it so easy is that take your finger, make a, a social media account, not in your personal name putting your face on everything, make it in the Muhammadan way, Sufi meditation name, take the content from the videos, chop them up into two minute, three minute segments and post it everywhere. Take the articles, post them, take the charity links, post them. Take some sandwiches and foods and distribute them. Get a shirt, go out and find in the west grocery stores that will give to you food that they want to throw away so that Allah won't be angered by them. Take what they will throw and give to people to eat. And this is a… leaves our life to be an immensely blessed life. We pray that Allah inspire us for this khidmat. By means of this khidmat take away and bring such a rahmah that Allah inshaAllah forgive us for where we fall short. If someone's relying on only their salah to save them and every other thing they're doing wrong and say that they're doing wrong and they're only thinking, oh why I pray, I go for Jummah, everything will be cleaned is a, is a great difficulty, it's a great misconception. That we do so many things wrong according to Allah's standard that the greatest, the greatest mercy is of service. That when we do these khidmat, when we do these good deeds that regulator power is going up and shaitan is going down. And the immense amount of hasanat and goodness that being dressed upon the souls of people whom they do these activities. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us make the beginning of our Muharram and the beginning of our spiritual year to be a blessed year. And Allah dress it with the fountains of abundance for every goodness done in Muharram, inshaAllah Allah multiplies that so throughout the whole year that goodness will be flowing and being inspired upon the servant to seek Allah's satisfaction inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon. 
Wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammadin Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.